Never retire in your 20s. It will end like Amanda Bynes. Who, how many of you guys, bro? I used to watch the Amanda show uh, back on like uh, Nickelodeon or some shit. Whenever I was a kid? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. When Amanda Bynes quit acting at the age of 24, her $6 million net worth implied that she'd oh, have money. a low-stress, problem-free future. Instead, through addiction, Ooh. mental hospitals, jail time, unfavorable articles, evictions, and the alienation of Whoa, everybody. Wait, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. Jail time, unfavorable articles, eviction. You got Diet Coke, Powerade, alcohol and dog food. Man. <laughs> Down bad, huh? and the alienation of everybody close to uh -oh. her should show that the universal dream of early retirement is actually a living hell. Yeah. The announcement first came on the 22nd of June 2010 and just six months prior Amanda was looking incredible. Yep. She was described as She's one of the hot. funniest and most promising performers of her generation mm -hmm. often being cast as a kind wholesome young adult which seemed to reflect exactly who she was off camera. Sure. In a 2007 interview it was highlighted that she'd almost never been in trouble. You haven't been to jail? <laughs> nope. No jail? No, no uh, re not yet. Rehab? No. No rehab. Amanda Bynes. <laughs> Man, that's crazy. Not yet. What kind of a starlet are you? I know. What's wrong with me? The reason for which being that she valued career longevity. I just have my eye on the prize, which for me is a, a long career, and I just, I don't want to blow what I've worked so hard to achieve. Before uh -huh. the interview ended, she'd add that she wasn't attracted to any kind of partying. I'm not interested in that. You know, the club scene and drinking doesn't appeal yeah. to me, so it's actually easier for me not to do it. However, it seemed Amanda was telling a naughty little fib. Uh -oh. Turns out she'd begun experimenting on the set of Hairspray one year prior, inspired by an article in a magazine that called Adderall the new skinny pill and they were talking about how women were taking it to stay thin. I was like, well, I have to get my hands on that before stay- Man. Man, that sucks. Isn't Adderall basically meth? Yeah, I don't think you should do meth. Just seems like a bad time. I thought about taking Adderall myself, but no. I started smoking marijuana when I was 16, even though everyone thought I was the good girl. Yeah, Her sure. usage was then exacerbated by I mean, the like, uh, smoking weed, like, come on, guys. Like, is this really, like, I mean, smoking weed? Uh, we really, that partnership ended in the company? Oh, that doesn't really matter then. Yeah, like, whatever. Who cares? Failure of her side business in 2009, after which she was losing high profile movie roles mm -hmm. for getting too cooked whilst on set. When I was doing Hall Pass, I remember being in the trailer and I used to chew the Adderall tablets because I thought they made me more high that way. It was the mixture of being so high that I couldn't remember my lines and not liking my appearance that prompted Bynes to pull out of the film. Well, that's I probably what it is, right? Because like, I mean, she used to be really, really hot and it looked like she gained a lot of weight. And I'm sure people told her that all the time. So she's taking Adderall and spamming Adderall to lose weight in order to uh, to not be fat. I mean, she got wired up. Yeah. And like, that's that's sad, man. It really is. After removing herself from Hall Pass, Amanda starred in one final movie, Easy A, the premiere of which becoming the straw that broke the camel's back. Bynes recalls attending a screening of her last film, oh, Easy A, and having a different reaction than everyone else to the movie. I literally couldn't stand my appearance in that movie, and I didn't like my performance. I was absolutely convinced I needed to yeah, stop- Yeah, see, that's what's fucked up, is like, so she fucked with her own head. She, she got in her own head, because like, I'm gonna be honest, like, I think she's really pretty in this. Like, uh, I'm just uh, being honest, right? Like, there's nothing... Yeah, she looks like a girl that wouldn't talk to me. ...acting after seeing it. In a foggy state of mind, Amanda announced her retirement in four spontaneous tweets reading, That's Being sad. an actress isn't as fun as it may seem. If I don't love something anymore, I stop doing it. I don't love acting anymore, so I've stopped doing it. I know 24 is a young age to retire, but you heard it here first, I've hashtag retired. Or I think that, like, if she wants to retire at a young age, that's totally fine. But, like, I think that if you put it in context, it's obvious that she's retiring because she's unhappy. You know, she's retiring because of, like, some form of body dysmorphia. 
flow with an unresolved substance problem and nothing else to do. Yep. Amanda's usage continued to escalate. Uh -oh. I just had no purpose in life. I'd been working my whole life and now I was doing nothing. Should have played MMOs, it would have solved this whole problem. It continues, I had a lot of time on my hands and I would wake and bake and literally oh, be God. stoned all day oh, long. God. Around this time, Amanda said she started hanging out with a seedier crowd and I isolated a lot. I got really into my drug usage and it became a really dark, sad world Jesus. for me. It was with this seedier crowd that Amanda began to frequent nightclubs, eventually leading to her first of many mug shots. Uh -oh. She'd been arrested for sideswiping a police car. A DUI, that's pretty bad, man. Two hit and run charges? Wait, this is really bad. Yeah, this isn't like, oh, I was smoking weed on like a pu in a public park or near a school. Like, what the fuck, bro? She's playing Grand Theft Auto. What is this? This again? No, you're thinking of Sniper Wolf. This is... Well, it's basically the same thing. It's actually even... I'd say it's probably almost worse. I think DUI is even worse. DUI is very bad run and driving under the influence, which she'd attempt to solve not through the court system, but rather by tweeting at the president. Hey Barack Obama, I don't drink. Please fire the cop who arrested me. I also don't hit and run at the end, although the post was met with silence. Despite the unfavorable- Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, listen, if it was Trump, maybe she would have had a chance press, Amanda continued to party in the public spotlight, even claiming in a People magazine interview that she was doing amazing while adding, I'm not talking about being arrested for D- Yeah, Trump would have done it because uh, he was attracted to her because she reminded Trump of his daughter. Why? Because I don't drink, and I don't drink and drive. It is all false, although according to others around her, Amanda was completely delusional. People around Amanda are really concerned about her, a source tells people. She tells people she doesn't party or drink, she doesn't realize she has a problem, uh -huh. which is followed by some rock-solid evidence confirming this. Just two days after claiming that she was doing amazing, Amanda was dropped by her agent, publicist, and lawyer, with an article stating all three people are telling similar stories. Bynes was a dream client for years, but she became extremely difficult in the past 12 months, some say uncontrollable. All three members of the team made multiple efforts to help Amanda before she went radio silent. Eventually, the team decided to cut bait, acknowledging they can't help someone that doesn't want to be helped. Clearly I think, I mean, that's sad, man. Like, this whole story, like... I mean, there's no... Okay, let me get this out of the way. There is literally no justification for, like, DUI. Like, I'm sure you can think of some weird, crazy circumstance where it's, like, not completely horrible. But, like, she wasn't in that circumstance, okay? Like, she should not have been using DU doing DUI. Like, what are we talking about? Yeah, she probably got fucked up. Yeah, like, a hundred fucking percent. Never an excuse. What are you talking about? What is this? fed up by her portrayal in the tabloids, Amanda found herself in physical altercations with the paparazzi. W well Amanda. Absolute W Amanda. Bro, bring a bat next time and a taser. Somebody tries to harass you in public off of this bullshit? Oh my god. In verbal altercations with Because you know, like, they're probably asking her, like, what do you think about being fat now? So how, so what is it, how's it like being a loser? Like, you know, they're basically like chatters, but you can't ban them high-profile celebrities. For example, she'd make a tweet reading, At Rihanna, you look so ugly trying to be white, who'd then respond by stating, Yeah, see what happens when they cancel intervention? Amanda then responded, <laughs> That's fucked up. That is absolutely so fucked up. Wow. Rihanna's a G? Yeah, apparently. To this by stating, At Rihanna, unlike your fugly face self, I don't do drugs. You need the intervention, dog. I met your ugly face in person. You aren't pretty, you know it. In a different twist. See, isn't that sad though, right? It's like she's constantly in her, in her feelings about the way people look. You know what I mean? Like that that's that's what's fucked up. It's sad, right? I mean, obviously, it's not justified, like, but it is sad. 
tweet, Amanda simply wrote, at Miley Cyrus, you're ugly, who take the more mature approach by responding with, I won't even entertain that thought. I was rooting for her comeback until she started attacking me, with yeah. Amanda's callouts being pretty clear projections, as she wasn't looking so great herself. Exactly. Not even three years after retiring, she'd post this video to her Twitter with the caption, I'm sucking on a Sour Patch Kid listening to music getting ready for tonight, prompting concern from her now declining fan base. She is seriously such a pretty girl. It's so sad seeing her like this. Something is definitely not right. She needs some help and someone or a few people to sit her down and get her back on straight. Or Didn't Amanda Bynes have like some sort of like altercation or problem with like family members managing her money or something like that? I don't remember if this was the case or not. Yeah, no, maybe that was somebody else. No, I don't. I think that was also Britney. No, no, it was not Britney Spears. Like I, I listen. She was in a conservatorship like Britney Spears. Yeah, I know. I know that it was. I, I, I'm not. God, okay, whatever. Maybe I am wrong, but I'm not thinking of Britney Spears. So with no clear desire to pursue anything meaningful, Amanda's mm -hmm. situation had no hope of improving. In that very same month, Amanda Bynes was allegedly kicked out of a New York gymnastics class for showing up in an outfit comprised of fishnets, a wig, and a lingerie like leotard. Well, I think that she was just a few years too early for this. Nowadays, you do that with a camera and then you cancel any guy that looks at you. Yeah, so really she was just ahead of her time. Of course she denies it, stating, I'm suing every blog saying I was kicked out of gymnastics. What is wrong with you people? What would you do if you found fake stories about you, making it difficult to ascertain what had actually happened? The article came alongside yeah, a different video of Amanda dancing uncontrollably- Because people do make up bullshit, right? They do. Oh, here we go. Yeah, okay, so this is a person that's like linked at least like a title of something, right? This is, so I- as always, I remembered the correct thing. It's just the usual. Uh, troubled actress Amanda Bynes has accused her parents of stealing and money laundering. The 27-year-old has also threatened to take legal action against her family, reported the Daily Star. She has earlier said that she is not on speaking terms with her parents. I was right. <clears throat> there it is. on a treadmill and another video of her doing a similar dance while walking around New York City without any shoes on. Three weeks later, she'd give a rare interview- I mean, I've seen just plenty of crackheads here in Austin that act like that. This, that I wouldn't even phase me. In Touch magazine- But they are crackheads. Dating. I have no clue why people say I'm insane. Dude, and the other day, this is so weird. I was at the convenience store and this old guy who looks like the fucker right in the pussy guy that with like the hood on, he was out in front of the store and he was like, hey, Zach, he knew my, my name. He knew me. And he was just like a 50 year old crackhead. And I was like, oh, what's up, bro? How you doing? And I'm just, you know, going to the store, right? I'm like, whatever. I'm, like, How I, I'm still thinking like, where the fuck do I know that crackhead from? Where do I know him from? Where did he come from? I don't know what to say. Every time I've heard it, it came from an ugly person's mouth, so I don't care. Before she'd add, I don't- yeah, See, there it is again, the appearance. Drink, I'm allergic to alcohol. The star insists she doesn't smoke pot, which is followed by Amanda being evicted only one month later for smoking pot in the lobby of her building. You've got to remember in like 2013, smoking weed still wasn't socially acceptable in the same way that it is now. Like we were still in that transition point. There were a lot of people that were negative about weed and it still isn't. Ah, yeah, but like it's, it's like... If, if it's like, I think it's like 95% socially accepted then, back then it was like 35% or 45% socially accepted. As a result, she'd make her way over to the Ritz-Carlton Hotel, where she'd bring the receptionist to tears by telling the worker she was too ugly to check Bynes mm -hmm. in. After a nine-day stay in the building, Amanda was kicked out for removing smoke detectors, which a company- <laughs> Ain't no chirping here.
and other photos of the messy state the room had been left in. Yeah. In the process, Amanda racked up a $9,000 hotel bill, which likely contributed to the $1.4 million she'd reportedly spent in only a couple of months. That's a Amanda lot. apparently withdrew $100,000 from her bank on June 4 and a further $100,000 on July 2nd, showing That's that she was money. spending about hundred grand every 30 days. Contributing uh, spending a hundred. I know people that spend a hundred thousand dollars a month, but the difference is they're working. Yeah, they they they, they work right. <laughs> On Genshin, I mean, you know to this was one single taxi ride from New York to Los Angeles, which she used as an alternative to flying, given airports didn't accept Google as a form of identification. <laughs> Man, she's just finding out a lot of shit, huh? That sucks. Once back in Los Angeles, she'd pour petrol on a random person's driveway before setting it on fire. In the process, she'd accidentally spill some of the petrol on her dog, prompting her to take it to a nearby convenience store for a wash, where she'd be kicked out by the owner for walking into the back without permission. She really is- this, this is just like an average crackhead. Like, this is just an average day and- because, yeah, you have to understand, like, this is an average Tuesday. Like, all of these things for an average crackhead, all of these things could have happened in one day. Mission. The bizarre evening led to her first stint in a mental hospital, after which she'd attempt to fix mm -hmm. her life by going to rehab, reconciling with her family, and That's rediscovering nice. purpose by enrolling in fashion school. Great. To Good signify her. her fresh new start, Amanda had some of her tattoos lasered, which accompanied a series of tweets implying that things were back to normal. That would be until five months later. Well, that didn't last. When she was once again arrested for driving under the influence. That very same month, Amanda was kicked out of fashion school for showing up high and causing, quote, Ooh. horrendous arguments. Jesus, she just can't keep it together. Oh my God, that's sad. Four weeks later, Amanda made another absolutely insane tweet, claiming that she'd been microchipped by her parents. My dad never did any of those things. The microchip in my brain made me say those things, but he's the one that ordered them to micro... Yeah, yeah, so this is, again, an average crackhead. Yeah. No, this is, this is normal. This is what a, cr a crackhead... Would, would a crackhead say this? Absolutely. Yes before stating that she was now engaged to a 19-year-old who she'd met in a fishing shop. It was then reported that Amanda was seen heading into a West Hollywood yeah. tattoo parlor to have her fiancé's face inked on her neck. Apparently, she was turned away for not having proper identification, and this might have been for the better given she was also recorded getting overly touchy with a random security guard at around the same time. However, it seemed this would also become a turning point as the negative press completely vanished overnight. There weren't any new Amanda updates for well over for a year until the I mean it is sad it, it really is it's sad to see this happen to somebody especially because like you know this is a person who like probably had to live with their entire life on rails with like their parents controlling everything that they did whenever they were a kid having to do all this stuff and then finally they become an adult and it's like it's just, they just go absolutely fucking berserk because they don't know how to act like a normal person. It's sad, man. It really is. It sucks. Child stars always get fucked up? No, they don't. There's plenty of child stars that are totally normal and there's nothing wrong with them at all. But there's a lot of them that aren't. And you hear about the ones that do. Name one. Uh, I mean, Leonardo DiCaprio, Christian Bale were both child stars. They're chilling. Yeah. I mean, Justin Timberlake. Yeah. Ryan Gosling. Yeah. True. Emma Watson. Yeah. Look at, uh, yeah. Uh, all the people from Harry Potter, like none of them are on crack or at least none of the main ones. Yeah. I, I think actually it's, it's the norm. Kurt Russell, Selena Gomez. Yeah. I feel like it's actually the norm that people don't have this happen, right? It's, it's sad to see it happen and it's easy to understand why it happens, but it, it is not the norm.
This article was posted simply confirming that she was back in fashion school. Good With a her. new challenge and goal to work <coughs> towards, Amanda was able to stay sober for three whole years, returning to the public spotlight with a wow. brand new interview. She'd state that things were going well. I've been going to school lately, fashion yeah. school, fit em. While expressing painful guilt over her choice to quit acting. I do miss acting and I actually have something surprising to tell you. I'm oh. going to start acting again. Yes! This would come alongside a tell-all interview well, nice. with Paper Magazine, in which she'd confirmed that she was now four years is so bar with the article stating that she'd have found a new pursuit to I'm getting a little bit nervous though because this is again this happened like five years ago and so like man like five years is a long time for some shit to change Fill the hole that acting had left. Fashion. So when she'd celebrate her fashion school graduation around seven months later, it was also a point of concern. Amanda had overcome her challenge, achieved her goal, but was back to a state of idleness. Not even six months after graduating, Amanda had returned to rehab, where she'd post selfies of her new home job looking face tattoos, as well as meet her new boyfriend, who she'd get engaged to only eight weeks later. Given the two met while in rehab, it seemed they helped each other stay sober, although after a rocky three-year relationship it eventually came to an end. In the days that followed their breakup, Amanda was recorded by a fan in this video. Amanda say what's up? What's up? We just walking the streets of Hollywood. I saw my girl walking so I said I had to say what's up. Which was posted to TikTok where it received over 15 million views and comments such as, man it breaks my heart. It must be so fucking annoying to have people like that record you like that and like I bet as a girl it probably is really fucking annoying because like you know, guys that think girl, like, they usually are, are used to looking at girls with makeup. And so, like, you see a girl without makeup, it's like, oh, man, she's ugly. Like, what the fuck? And, like, that's just how it is, right? But, like, as a guy, it, you don't really have that as much. Yeah, true. No, for real. Like, fuck that attention. Yeah, it must suck. Hard to see how they destroyed Amanda Bynes, the sweetest girl ever. It took me so long to realize that this was Amanda Bynes. I'm so sad now. Girl, Good what? Recognize. That's Amanda Bynes? My heart goes out to her. Hope she's getting well. However, the worst was still- Man, am I crazy for thinking, like, she doesn't even look that fucked up? Like, she looks fine. Like, yeah, the, the face tattoo is weird, but, like, other than that, I think she looks fine, man. She looks high as fuck. <laughs> Maybe a bit. What's up? What's up? Yeah, like we just walk in the streets of Hollywood. I saw my girl walking, so I said I, just, I had to say what's up. I, I I don't yeah, I don't think she looks that bad. Maybe I'm crazy, but like I don't. She looks on to have a brain? Yeah, I mean a bit, but like I don't know to realize that this was Amanda Bynes. I'm so sad now. Girl, what? That's Amanda Bynes? My heart goes out to her. Hope she's getting well. However, the worst was still yet to come. On the very same day that the TikTok was posted, mm -hmm. Amanda was found roaming the streets of Los Angeles naked, resulting in her return to a psychiatric facility. Just two months after this, a new yep. article was published titled Amanda Bynes is sad and isolated after being released from mental health facility as she has lost interest in her passions while living alone, which has followed by another psychiatric hold just three months after her previous one. Jesus. More optimistically, however, it was shown in September 2023 that Amanda was making an effort to remove her face tattoos, which you could argue is at least a step in the right direction. God damn, man. When Amanda... Holy fuck, man. That is sad. The whole thing is just fucking sad, in my opinion. Like, what the fuck? Seems bipolar. That was depressing. Yeah, I know. Never retire in your 20s. The one like Amanda Bynes. I don't know, bro, about this title. Like, I don't think the title is even accurate. Like, I feel like this is, like, such a massive fucking exception. Like, there's so many crazy things that have happened with her. Like, it makes sense, you know? Like, nothing to... It's got... Yeah, it's got really... I think it does, though. It's like, it seems like whenever she had something that she was doing, everything was fine. But whenever she had to do what she wanted to do, everything fell apart. You know, there's the video right there. It's a decent video. Uh, just like the kid from Home Alone. I don't know what that whole story is. Let's see here. A title reeks of jealousy. I don't think it's jealousy. Would you say her environment fucked her up? Well, yeah. I mean, for sure. But, like, I also want to say, I know plenty of girls that that did all this stupid shit with their life and they weren't famous, too. Like... There are plenty of girls that do really dumb, stupid stuff, and they go on crack and shit. And it's not because they're, like, some sort of crazy person or anything like that. Or, like, you know, they were in, uh, 
uh, you know, a child actor. No, they're just fucking nuts. People, not women. Well, I mean, she's a girl. It's I think being a, a girl, it's it's very important. Like what if you're a girl or a guy, this is a totally different way to live your life. Of course, guys fuck their wife up, too. But I think the way a girl fucks their wife up is, is very different. Uh, it is. And like the values that girls have, the values that society places on girls are totally fucking different than men. That's just how it is. Now, I understand there are a lot of people that don't like biology and they want to think that women, women, men and women are the same. They're not. They're not the fucking same. They don't get treated the same. They don't act the same. They don't have the same bones. They don't have the same chromosomes. They don't have the same anything. There's a lot of similarities. But there are a lot of differences, too. Now, I wouldn't say they don't have the same anything, but they are, they're different in a lot of ways. It's just how it is. No one thinks that? Well, people always like to say, well, this can happen to guys, too. Well, yeah, of course it can. There's plenty of guys that are crackheads. Do you find out that actors are on drugs? It's like, yep, nothing to see here. Well, it's not a big deal. I mean, like, I don't care if somebody's a crackhead. Just be in the movie. Like, if you're good in the movie, then I don't care if you're a crackhead or not. I mean, the DUIs are pretty bad, though. Like, the DUI, yeah, DUIs are very problematic. Pregnancy, for example, uh, the man can run away if that happens. Woman has to go through it for nine months, which is very traumatic and not a little at all. I mean, I don't, I don't want to get into, like, all the differences. But the, the, I don't want to get into this shit, okay? But, like, I'm just saying in general, that's what I think. Famous women have to deal with people shitting on their appearance in ways that guys don't. There are some guys that do have to deal with that if like their appearance was a big part of their popularity, but it's not as intrinsic to their popularity as it is with girls. I think with girls, like some guys get it, but all girls get it, if that makes sense. 